Hey guys, it's going to be really technical, so pay close attention. The red button is record. <laughs> it was also stop recording. This is play, and this is trash. Alright, so as I start the interview, I'm going to hit the record button first, before I actually start recording the interview. And make sure I've got Tomas in there. Ask my question, Tomas, tell me please, why do you love one so much? I love one so much because they're an awesome organization and I get free t-shirts. Excellent. So I actually give them a little bit of space afterwards just in case we need to edit that later before I hit finish with recording. So when you're framing your shot with the flip cam, you've got a screen that looks roughly like a square here and you want the person's eyes to be about two-thirds of the way up the screen. So when I'm framing this shot here with Grace, that's what we're, oh, here we go. So that's what we're going for here. And now if Grace were to talk to Tomas off screen here, and they were having an interview, I would actually want to position her one-third to the right of the screen here as well, just to give her a little bit of padding on the interview there. So on the left side of the frame, we can see that she's talking to someone else. So Grace, why do you like one? Well, clearly it's because of all the other great interns that I get to work with. Cool. Um, and so that's, how you, that's the rule of thirds and that's how you frame the shot. So the 180 degree rule is you always want the camera on one side if you're having two people interviewed. Um, and so I have Lee and Grace right here. We have the camera position over there. But according to the rule, you don't want the camera to be on this side or through the wall because you don't want to confuse the viewer or get the other sides of their faces because it gets really awkward there. So make sure you're always filming from one side of the interview. So for camera movement, when you're recording, you want to make sure that you've always got your camera steady so it's not shaking around too much. And make sure you're bending your knees just a little. I know this looks silly, but you get the best uh, legs workout. Legs workout. <laughs> ever, double plus. So <laughs> you've got it supported. And make sure that if you're moving, your whole body is moving with it. Otherwise, again, your film's not going to turn out. So that is a little less of a camera movement. Okay, so when you're recording an interview or recording anywhere that you're you know, going to be in Africa, you want to be sure to record a lot of B-roll. So B-roll is anything that's not your primary content. So if you're shooting an interview, that's your A-roll. That's what you're primarily shooting. And then B-roll is like cutaway shots, so like a profile shot of the interviewee um, or you know, an establishing shot of the place that you were conducting the interview. Anything, anything that helps add to the story without being you know, directly your subject or directly the interviewee. So, for example, if we were doing, um, right now this camera is the A camera for this whiteboard and for myself. Um, and if we wanted to do B-roll, we could have a camera off on the side here, getting profile shot, or if we wanted to, we would get like a shot of the side of this whiteboard here. And so, while explaining, you know, what this video is, we would want to get side shots here, you know, do motion shots. Basically, whenever you're doing B-roll, you want to try to get as many different types of shots for every subject you're shooting. So you want to do like pans down, pan from the side, um, you know, motion shots, basically anything that you can come up with. That way in between different A-roll cuts, you can provide a little additional material. Makes the video a little bit more interesting and a little bit more dynamic. Cool, so one thing we forgot to mention is uh, lighting. So you don't want to do a shot where there's a window behind the person, because the face will be underexposed, you won't be able to see them. Uh, by the same token, you don't want the sun right in their eyes, so that way they're squinting. So preferably the light source is kind of coming from one of the sides. So if you have windows, you want them kind of looking perpendicular to the light, and the window will hit like one side of their face. So try to keep that in mind if possible. Uh, light conditions are always kind of tough, so just do the best with what you got. Cool.